Hello and welcome to Learn From The Experts, sponsored by the Women's Business Owner Alliance, better known as WBOA. And today I'm really excited to have Dr. Sue with me, who is a dentist. So this is gonna be fun. Hi, doctor, how Hi. are you? Hi, very good, thanks. So what is your full name and your practice? I'm Dr. Sue Keller of Strong and Healthy Smiles in Florence. I love that, Strong and Healthy Smiles. That's great. So I'm gonna have a confession right here in front of everyone. I have a full-blown anxiety attack every time I sit down in that chair. Do you know how so common that is? I bet, I bet. <laughs> but I've you learned- You are not alone. I, I bet, I don't, there's something about it. But I know that caring for your teeth is like so important. It's one of the top things that we can do. But I actually had got some myths that I wasn't sure about the answer, but this is things you hear all the time and stuff. So let's start from the beginning. They say you should start going to the dentist about three years old. What do you have to say about that? Myth. Myth. Okay. <laughs> I wish we had a little buzzer. <laughs> Maybe a myth buster today. Yes. Um, so a child's first visit to the dentist should be first tooth or first birthday, whichever comes first. How interesting. And in fact, if I can see, I, my preference would be if you're planning to get pregnant, you should be seeing your dentist first and getting dental clearance before you try to get pregnant. Wow. Because a lot of work can be done and get to get your mouth healthy, which once you're pregnant, there's a lot of work that can't be done. And that's not to see, going to the dentist is very important during pregnancy, mm -hmm. um, especially due to the hormonal changes that happen during pregnancy. Um, gingivitis, gum disease can start to flare up and it's really important to go even more frequently, oftentimes. And also during pregnancy, um, women's diets change. Mm -hmm. um, there can be acid reflux, there can be vomiting in the mornings, all those sorts of things right. require a lot of extra. I never Thought of tooth that, yeah. care. Um, also, you might be going from eating two or three meals a day to eating six or seven meals a day. And if you don't increase your tooth care during that time, you could end up having problems with your teeth. But the one reason I would love to see women, at least while they're pregnant, is to give them some information about when to feed their baby, when to nurse their baby in conjunction with tooth care. Oh. So um, I read a book when I was when I was pregnant by Tracy Hogg called The Baby Whisperer. And in it, she had a system called Easy. Eat, activity, sleep and time for you. And so it's important that the baby eat upon waking because then there's an activity time and then when the baby gets tired or cranky, the baby goes to sleep and then there's time for you. Right. <laughs> but what that means is the baby is never dependent upon nursing to go to sleep. Uh. And when the baby doesn't have any teeth, it's not such a big deal, but as soon as the teeth come in, if you have a baby who's dependent on nursing and, and nursing through the night and not having the teeth clean, that puts that baby at an increased risk for cavities. Wow. So That's everybody's born with one perfect, well, not born, everyone's gonna get two, almost two perfect sets of teeth. Let's just say almost everyone gets two perfect sets of teeth, right. but it's what happens to them in the environment and how we take care of them that impacts right. whether or not you can have dental problems for the most That's part. Fabulous. There are a few genetic problems that can happen, oh, sure. but for the most part, people are healthy. So if there's one thing I could say to pregnant women, if you can get in the habit of um, feeding your baby when the baby wakes up, nursing the baby when the baby wakes up, then that's gonna be the healthy habit for the teeth when the teeth eventually come wow. in. That's it. If I don't Amazing. see the baby till first tooth, first birthday, they're already in a pattern of eating that might not be beneficial for their teeth. No mom who's just nursed their baby to sleep is gonna at risk waking the baby up and actually yeah. cleaning the teeth. Yeah. Um, and it's important to clean the teeth when they first come in. Wow. So there's a lot about pregnancy care and early infant care. Um, very, very important to see a dentist regular during pregnancy. Um, if uh, pregnant women have trouble with their gums, they can get a periodontal disease, and that bacteria can actually cause low birth weight babies and cause trouble during delivery. Wow. So healthy gums, healthy baby. Yeah, <laughs> who, who would have thought? So is healthy gum care like brushing your teeth twice a day? Um, well, that's another myth. Okay. <laughs> funny you should ask me that. Um, so a lot of times people get the idea that they should brush their teeth when they wake up and when they go to bed. Mm -hmm. I call that brushing at bookends. Okay. Bookends of the day. Um, however, every time you eat something that has carbohydrates in it, you're, you're, you're chewing and the, and, the, and the bacteria and the carbohydrates that feed the bacteria in your mouth cause acid production for at least 20 minutes. So the most important time to brush your teeth is after you eat. So really, just like you go to the bathroom and you wash your hands, if you put something in your mouth that's not water, you should clean your teeth in some way. 
Wow. Ideally brushing with fluoride and xylitol. Um, if you can't brush, there's rinses that you can use and with, which have xylitol, uh, fluoride neutralizing things to neutralize acids. If you can't do that, you can chew a xylitol gum. Um, if you can't do that, any sugar-free gum. And if you can't do that, at least rinse your teeth out with, rinse your mouth out with water. So wow. cleaning your teeth in some way. Now, do you have to do it every time? Probably not. But if you can think about it as I should be, I had something to eat, I should clean my teeth as soon as possible afterwards, then that's a good, good habit yeah. to be into. Because I definitely was a two time a day brusher. Absolutely. And I do have problems with my teeth, so this is. Well, are they going to clear some of that? When you think about it, if you brushed your teeth at the beginning of the day, at the end of the day, and you had three meals and two snacks in the middle, for five times during the day, the acids and the bacteria were just percolating in your mouth, yes. you know, and that's gonna, what causes breakdown. It's yes. really acids. It's not the bacteria themselves, but it's the acids that they produce that right. pull the mineral out of the teeth. Okay, oh, wow. and the more often that happens, then the softer the teeth can get. Right, and especially because I'm a muncher. Like I've always been a, like if a you're grazer. A grazer. Yes, you know, yeah. And some like, people uh, need to do that for their for other parts of their health. But then you need to increase the tooth, tooth care, care that goes along with that. I've already learned so much. This is <laughs> awesome. So if my teeth or gums aren't hurting, does that mean everything's okay? That's another myth. <laughs> I knew it. <laughs> I'm doing good here. So um, there's three times, typically three times when a tooth might hurt. One is if the dentin ex is exposed. Now you may have had that experience when you have a little bit of recession and the root surface is exposed and you have something sweet um, and you feel zing or you have something cold and you feel zing and then it goes away. Um, or if a tooth breaks, it can be sensitive after that. When the dentin is exposed, that's the inner layer of the tooth, you can have some sensitivity, um, but it's a reversible type of thing and coatings can be put on, you can put in, repair the break. Uh, another time a tooth will really start to hurt, and that's generally when people have like a toothache, is when the tooth is dying. Mm -hmm. a, a tooth can die because it got hit hard, it can die because it had a big filling and there was a crack, it can die because there was a cavity that went deep. All those reasons are reasons a tooth can start hurting. Okay, and in the past, there was also another myth where if you put it, they said if you put an aspirin right oh, yes. on the gums by the tooth, that that would take the way that would be bad. Aspirin is salicylic acid that would give you a burn on your gums that would actually be even more painful. Okay, uh, so don't do that. You can you can swallow the aspirin, but <laughs> you, right. no, don't put it on your gums. Um, so when when a tooth is dying, it will hurt and it will hurt really really bad, very mm -hmm. very painful. Yes, very I've painful. experienced. But that. once it dies all the way, it stops hurting. Ah. And so then people are like, oh, I had a toothache. It was really bad, but then it went away. It stopped. I'm okay. Well, no, that just means the nerve is now dead. And as it dead, it is, when it's dead, it decomposes. And as it de decomposes, the bacteria go into the jawbone where you get an abscess, an infection, oh, an abscess. Okay. Now, at the turn of the uh, uh, you know, 20, 19, 1900s, you know, 1800s and 1900s, um, dental abscesses were the second leading cause of death in London. People die from dental abscesses. You can live wow. without your teeth, but you can't live with an abscess. abscess. So it's, wow. that's a medical emergency, and those yes. things need to be, be taken care of, either through root canal therapy to try to save the tooth, or just having the tooth removed. Either of those things, but an abscess is nothing to play around with. Wow. So once the bacteria decomposes, um, it, it breaks down, you get pus in the jawbone, it starts to eat away the jawbone, it can affect other teeth, it can go into the sinus, go in the bloodstream, it goes all those different places. Um, so once the pressure starts to build up, pain will come back again. Okay, yes. So those, there's, out of those three times where you might have dental pain, two of them are, signify a, a big problem. Mm -hmm. And that the, the dying tooth that turns dead stops hurting, but it doesn't mean the problem went away. Okay. So you should probably see your dentist regularly. <laughs> like what, what does seeing your dentist regularly mean? Well, it's funny. We all have gotten this idea that we should go to the dentist twice a year. Yes, right? I thought that was a great amount of time. Well, you know, that came from a toothpaste company back in the 1950s. Okay. Use our toothpaste and see your dentist twice a year. That's literally how the whole idea of going to the dentist twice a year occurred. amazing how a lot of that starts? Occurred. Um, but you should see your dentist as often as you need to in order to maintain your dental wellness. Uh, okay. So some people might be able to see the dentist once a year, or once every two years. Honestly, if, de right. if depending on they've never had a cavity, never had a filling, they don't have any medical issues. But the longer you wait to go to the dentist, you, you, people think, oh, I'm just going to get my teeth clean. It's not just a cleaning. We do so much more, starting with the blood pressure screening, reviewing your medications, finding out, oh, you're taking a new uh, high blood pressure medicine. Oh, you were just put on a new um, antidepressant medication. Those can dry your mouth out. And okay. within six months of you taking those medicines and having a dry mouth, you could end up with a mouthful of cavities because it just changed the environment of your mouth and let those acid-loving bacteria go wild because your saliva is no longer there. 
to neutralize and buffer the acids that are in your mouth. Wow. So it can go from perfectly good to perfectly bad. So it's not that two times a year is, is bad. Actually, it's really good. Um, but some people actually need to go more often, four times a year. Some people might even go need to go six times a year. It depends on how well they're able to take care of their teeth themselves, mm -hmm. how much builds up in their mouth, and again, what other factors are going on with them medically, um, with medicines, or what's going on in their gums that they need extra attention, extra care, and extra support. Yes. So what I'm kind of hearing or taking from this part of it is that thinking of a dentist is than more than a dentist, it's really a healthcare provider. Absolutely. I mean, we know it's a healthcare provider, but it's more of a, you know, to think, and you have to think of it differently. It's not just get my teeth cleaned twice a year. It's, it's not, you gotta think. Cleaning the teeth is the least important part of that visit. It's okay. the dental wellness. It's talk, it's finding out what's going on in your life, what might get it beginning away. People taking care of elderly parents, taking care, taking care of young children, they don't have a lot of time to spend on themselves. So sometimes right. we, can, we can give them tips or techniques or special rinses or toothpaste that will help um, decrease the risk of them having problems once we know things that are going on. Um, if there's something that they're having trouble with, we can substitute. There's, there's so many different things that we can substitute. If you have big hands and you can't get the floss in, there's all sorts it's of different right. tools and things that we can use. If you're not able to hold a brush well, um, it's, it's, there's all sorts of different brushes that we can uh, recommend um, that can make it easier to get that done. Um, there's even a three-headed brush with, that has angles on the side and on the top, and you just go in and go back and forth, and it does an actually really nice job of cleaning. So oh, someone okay. with limited dexterity or kids who are trying to become a little bit more independent with their brushing but um, are going there really fast, <laughs> right. even a brush for them. <laughs> right. No, that's great. And so you had mentioned before that chewing gum is okay. Chewing gum is actually good for your teeth. Oh, good. If it's the right kind of gum. We're not talking about the hubba bubba from the right. uh, back in the day, right? <laughs> yeah. the, all the bubble gum. But a, two, a gum that has xylitol in it. Xylitol. xylitol. Xylitol is a natural sugar that is a five carbon sugar rather than the usual six carbon sugar. By losing that extra carbon, the effect on the bacteria is they don't reproduce as well, so you have less bacteria, and they don't make acids, so there's less damage to the teeth. So if a pregnant woman chews xylitol gum or has xylitol products, whether mints or toothpaste or rinses, five times per day during her pregnancy, she decreases the chance of passing on her bacteria, her germs, to her baby and decreases the time or, or um, lets the child progress longer up past age three without having dental cavities of their own. Wow, that's amazing. So cavities are a bacterial disease that's passed from right. usually primary right. care, caregiver, usually mom, to baby by tasting the food and passing it on. Wow. So if you're having a lot of dental problems, um, it's probably not the best thing to taste your food and pass it on to the baby. I mean, you oh, can test yes. it for temperature right, other ways, right. but you're passing bacteria on. You can pass herpes virus <laughs> on. I've so, seen people like pick up pacifiers and rinse it off in their mouth and stick it. And in they've their just inoculated mouth. their baby <laughs> with their bacteria. So right. I really hope that's that they're the people with the good teeth in the family. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's right. <laughs> because it's usually related to the bacteria the, and the type of acid producing bacteria. Some strains of bacteria produce more acids than others, and that's generally what causes the cavity problem. Wow. So now I'm going to be a little selfish to get some information for me. I've, I feel like I've always had so soft teeth, but now that I, because my teeth just, I had so many cavities and abscesses and just so many problems, but now listening to, I was probably eating too much sugar and not cleaning my teeth enough. So what's, like, is there soft teeth and all that? Generally, um, there, it, again, genetically it is possible for people to have soft teeth, but most people don't have soft teeth. It's more of an environmental issue and a okay. care issue. Um, also, um, you know, when I drill teeth, when I have to do a filling, taking out the cavity and putting in a filling, certain teeth are harder than other teeth. The teeth that are hardest are usually ones that had fluoride treatments when they were younger, and mm -hmm. teeth that didn't have fluoride are usually softer. When you use fluoride, um, it replaces, uh, it goes from having a hydroxy appetite in the mineral enamel shell to a fluorohydroxy appetite. The fluorohydroxy appetite is more acid resistant. So even if there is acid in the mouth, it's less likely to break down the tooth. Wow. Um, so that's the, the benefit of fluoride. It actually hardens and strengthens, strengthens the teeth, makes them more acid resistant. That's the benefit of the fluoride. So what we do for folks, if they are getting new cavities, I don't expect any adults to be getting cavities. I don't expect anybody to get any cavities, quite frankly. Okay. Um, I would go through a detailed questionnaire of your medical history, what you're doing at home to take care of your teeth, what you're doing as far as eating and drinking throughout the day, how often, how much, when, what, um, how often you're cleaning in, in relationship to that. And I can test your saliva in six different ways to, ta to find out do you have enough saliva, what's the bacterial activity in that saliva, um, does it buffer well, what's the pH, 
and are you dehydrated? So we wow. do uh, six to end tests on um, on that saliva. So with all that information, I can cull it together and I can make recommendations that usually involve using certain rinses or certain toothpaste, increasing um, the frequency of cleaning um, and timing it better with meals, for example. Um, or for example, someone is having um, someone who just drink something with a meal and it's done and they're brushing their teeth afterwards is going to be a lower risk of decay than someone who takes a, maybe a, a coffee with milk and sugar and then sips at it all morning long, right? Which so I'm not I saying don't do, have your right? coffee. I'm just saying <laughs> yes. say either either drink it in a regular period of time and then clean your teeth afterwards. Right. Rinse your mouth out with water. There's some things that you can do. Take Learn how to take it black rather than with the milk and sugar. Like there's different right. ways to adapt that. Yes. Um, so we can usually come up with a plan, a prevention plan, really customized for that individual person right. to, to help them. And I know it's really hard to change habits. So generally we're trying to recommend a a, again, a rinse or a toothpaste that's going, okay, if you're going to continue to drink five cans of Coke per day, here's <laughs> what you could do to help your teeth not break down. Here's right. some of the things you can use and some of the things that you could do. That's great. Well, you've given me like so many, like, I am a changed person as far as it comes to my teeth today. To bust some de dental myths for you. Yes, <laughs> and I'm gonna like pass this on to my family members and any pregnant woman. I mean, that's amazing. I feel like that one piece. If I could just yes. get that one piece of information out to the community, yes. I could help people. I could help women and 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 families raise cavity-free kids um, because I've been in practice for over 23 years. People still have the same problems now that they had when I started in practice, and it's a little frustrating. I feel like as a profession, we have really not. You know, we fix problems, but what have we done to really get out on the community level and talk to people about preventing those problems? And I would love to start to get people talking about dental wellness. I'd like to get the dentists and the pediatricians and the schools and the hospitals all together to talk about how we as a community can create dental wellness. Yes. And a lot, it's not about money. It's not about cost because it's a toothbrush, toothpaste, floss and water yeah, really, and using yeah. it at the right times. I mean, that's yes. going to take care of 85% of the problem. Okay, yes. from there you can talk about how you might put um, a dental chair in an emergency room, how you might remove a tooth rather than giving somebody opioids and antibiotics. Why don't you just take care of the problem, which is take the infected tooth out. Then from there you can talk about the community health centers, funding those, have salaried staff, um, taking out third parties like Medicaid and just having um, direct care Wow. Provided for people. This could be a whole nother conversation. It's a this whole is, other conversation. No, this is wonderful, really. But it's I think great. that we can, I mean, we're in a wonderful community, wonderful area here. People want to know, they want to do the right thing, they want to take care of their kids. We want to raise a cavity for kids. We want to have yes. people not have trouble. It's not fun to pick fix people's it's fun to give people back their smile oh yes right absolutely but i'd rather them not have those problems in the first place yeah so I've, i just turned 50 this year and well, i good see for you I, I take care of individual people but i want to get that message out to the larger larger community of what we can do to have more dental wellness in our community well that's great so i hope people watch this and so say your full name and the name of your business again so i make sure i get it right i'm dr sue keller dr strong sue and keller. healthy smiles in florence that's great. So thank you so much for joining us today. I hope you learned a fraction of what I learned because I'm so excited. And if you'd like to learn more about Dr. Sue Keller, you can go onto WBOA.org and look up her profile and you get to know how to get a hold of her. So thank you for joining us and I hope we see you again. Thank you.